Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. Protocols are finalized for the partial reopening of schools to accommodate examinations. More mitigating measures are implemented in the health sector as the island reopens its economy and the Central Statistical Office to begin the labor force survey via telephone. The third term of the academic year remains suspended. However, the Ministry of Education has been busy preparing schools for partial reopening. Students of grades 6 and form 5 will get the opportunity to return to the classroom to benefit from at least three weeks of teaching ahead of the common entrance and CSEC examinations. More from Anisia Antoine. The Ministry of Education has been working closely with the Ministry of Health and Wellness in making decisions as it relates to the reopening of school. Based on the assessment done by the ministries, the education system can fully be reopened. However, out of an abundance of caution, the ministry has decided upon a phased approach. The Ministry of Education has made the decision to allow face-to-face -face learning at schools for two critical groups, the Grade 6 students and Form 5 students, for a period of 16 days beginning June 2, 2020. The Chief Education Officer noted that the department has engaged all stakeholders and devised a strategy to deal with the current challenges including the use of water resources, transportation, school feeding and sanitization. We appreciate that schools are different. A school with 120 grade 6 students is a different environment to a school with 20 grade 6 students. And so there will be an individual plan based on each of those schools, similarly for our secondary schools. We spoke of some of the issues for our parents and making sure that we get the names of vulnerable students for our school feeding, our transportation subsidy, the use of our mask. All of those bits of information have been collected to ensure that any needs that we have out there, we do our utmost to ensure that our students get the best possible reintegration into the school. We have not left out our teachers and we continue to say that teacher voice is important in the implementation of this, this program moving forward. Our counseling services continue to be available to all of us. The Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmer-George, explained that all decisions made in the wake of COVID-19 are based on the National Risk Assessment. It is estimated that COVID-19 will be here with us for over two years. The education sector, in a similar way like every other sector, needs to implement protocols to ensure safe instruction of our students in reality, is the option of keeping schools closed for two years. We understand the panic and the fear related to COVID-19. And this is also justified given the pandemic in the developed world. But we cannot act out of fear. We need to use the assessment of our local situation and ensure the necessary measures are in place to move forward. Dr. Belma George highlighted the additional factors considered due to school closure, including the risk of non-return and limited access to meals. According to the World Health Organization, there have been few COVID-19 outbreaks in schools. From the studies conducted, the transmission was primarily related to the social events linked to schools rather than transmission within classrooms. The Ministry of Health and Wellness through the use of scientific, evidence-based, and using the epidemiological analysis on our national situation, we'll continue working closely with the Ministry of Education as we transition through a phased, priority-based plan to ensure safe educational environment to all of our students, the staff, and the management of these institutions. 2,444 students are registered to do the CSEC examinations and 2,198 students are registered to do the common entrance examinations. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. 
And for the first time ever, students at all levels have been tutored virtually for an entire school term. Teachers have also been forced to retool and upskill to embrace the technological change brought about by e-learning. More in this report from Glenn Simon. Desolate. Definition. A place deserted of people and in a state of bleak and dismal emptiness. The spirited, rambunctious sounds of children replaced by the quiet chirping of birds at midday on what should have been a regular school day. The Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, CCSS, like many other schools on island, the region and the wider world, is living out this new normal of virtual learning. But how are teachers and students coping? Principal at CCSS, Marva Daniel, explains. It has been a challenge, but an exciting one. In every crisis, there's opportunity. For me, and of course, every principal knows what works best for them. We have embraced Moodle as our learning platform, and we have ensured that our students access the school's email account. She said 90% of CCSS students were able to connect online from the commencement of the school term, but 10% have not connected virtually, and so the school has been tasked with reaching them. We have not not, of course, been able to access every single student and there are various reasons why. And it's not necessarily technology, lack of devices, internet access and so on. There are some students who are just plain blank, not interested. They have to be, you know, coerced. They have to be, you know, pushed more. And so the support of parents in this you know, situation or throughout this journey has been pivotal. They play a very vital role in ensuring that students remain excited, remain educated, and remain focused. CCSS parents Gloria Dorius and Cipriana George endorsed the e-learning measures taken by the Ministry of Education and the school. I'd like to thank the teachers of the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School who went above above and beyond the call of duty to ensure that our children transition to homeschooling. It's been challenging being housebound with not one, but two very opinionated teenagers. But we've always believed in this household that it is better safe than sorry. So we're staying indoors, spending time with each other, and ensuring that we practice social distancing when we do venture out so as to ensure we minimize the spread of this disease. The principal stressed that greater family and community support is needed to allow more students to join the e-learning platforms. Essentially, it is important for persons to appreciate what we have now and stop the, 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 the complaining and whatever, but see how we can make it better. As I said to parents, you may have a phone, your child may not have one. Allow the student to use your phone. It's just for a little while. Your relatives may have the devices that they need. Let us share with one another so everybody can get access. Daniel said, this COVID-19 situation has caused unexpected productivity gains and a positive residual benefit for both teachers and students via the e-learning platforms. So teachers are now upgraded, they're upskilled and they are now able to use so many different platforms. And so our students are now a digital student. We're not just a CCSS student. We have revolutionized teaching and learning. And our students, based on what they have been saying, are loving it. And as the corridors and lunch tables of every educational institution, like CCSS, beckon for renewed activity, COVID-19 has ushered in a new realization, that of e-learning. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Meanwhile, the government is heightening mitigating measures in the health sector as the island reopens its economy. As the country moves through the various phases of reopening its economy, the potential impact on the people of St. Lucia is not lost on the government as it continues to bolster the health sector, ensuring that the country is equipped to deal with potential COVID-related threats. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, explained that the Victoria Hospital is being outfitted to serve as an isolation center. 
He indicated that an estimated 20 isolation rooms would be available by the 1st of June. The minister admitted that the pandemic has placed the government in a difficult situation. However, before the decision was taken to reopen the country, both the economic situation and the human aspect were weighed. People are only thinking um, sometimes when we speak about opening the borders of our tourists coming in. We have hundreds and hundreds, I, I might say thousands of St. Lucians who want to come back home. Right. Many of them have been stranded abroad for quite an extended period of time. They may have run out of money by now, not they may, a lot of them have run out. So they, they're living in these places at the mercy of other individuals. A lot of these people want to come back home. Unless the flights begin to come in, some of these people cannot return. Even in these people returning, <clears throat> we have to take it on a phased approach as to how many can we handle at the quarantine facilities. Because given where they are coming from, a lot of them may need to be quarantined when they come in. So it is our own internal capacity to be able to handle a lot of these things that would, that would come into play. Based on predictions, the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects will remain for years. As such, the minister indicated that it is for this reason that a comprehensive plan has been rolled out to support the reopening of the economy as the country cannot remain closed indefinitely. From all what we are hearing from science, COVID is going to be here for a while. By the time we get the right vaccine, the production of the vaccine to be able to be distributed to the people who need it, and that would be on a global scale, it may be a year and 18 months from now, as the experts are saying. And I can tell you, from January, they were still saying a year and 18 yeah. months. Today, five months later, they're still saying a year and six months. So clearly, we, we are up against it. The reality is, can we survive as a country just focusing on the health without dealing with the economic crisis? And, and that is what brings us to the point where we are taking very measured approach. And St. Lucia continues to be a world leader in dealing with this matter. If you look at the, the plan outlined by the, the team for the reopening of the borders in St. Lucia. A number of strict protocols have been established and put in place for the various sectors as the country forges ahead with the reopening. The Ministry of Health has underscored the importance of not only adhering to the established protocols, but implementing them correctly. Health officials are intensifying efforts to ensure that members of the public adhere to the stipulated protocols in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The government of St. Lucia is currently embarking on a five-phased approach to reopen the country's economy. As such, strict protocols have been put in place. Family Life Educator at the Bureau of Health Education, Naomi Grandison, noted the importance of not only the adherence to the protocols, but also the correct application of the stipulated measures, such as washing of hands and wearing of face masks. We're telling persons to, as Carlton said, to hold the, the cord towards mm. the back, to put and remove it, to wash your hands or sanitize your hands before and after you, put, you take off your mask, and most importantly, if you touch your mask by accident or because of a need during the day and you touched the front of the mask, you need to immediately sanitize your hands in that moment. I am very concerned when I see persons continually removing their mask and I don't see a sense of urgency to sanitize right mm -hmm. away. This is a surface that is a barrier that is exposed to people speaking, to the air that you pass by, to, um, to the very particles that are settling from inside. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is something that you do not want to be 
touching because that that hand you can put by your eyes your nose or your mouth mm -hmm. and you can touch surfaces with so you want to reduce the the possibility of the um well vermina simoji Granderson highlighted the significance of remaining vigilant and proactive and staying on high alert as the economy gradually reopens. A decrease in the, the adherence of the protocol to prevent COVID-19 is going to put us at greater risk because mm -hmm. what we were doing before has contributed to the, the, the control um, of the COVID-19 in St. Lucia. So if right now we think, oh my God, the, the place is open, we're safe, we don't have any um, active cases right now, mm -hmm. let me go back to the normal, which mm -hmm. is what I'm, uh, I'm seeing. Some people are literally, you know, it's, it's like back to pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, if you begin to act that way, you are going to take away the environment and the actions that was preventing the COVID-19. In the first place. So if you want to continue to keep it low, Vigilance is important. I want to thank all the businesses and the persons who have been taking steps. St. Lucia has done a fantastic job. While St. Lucia has registered success in the fight against the coronavirus, the Family Life Educator encouraged the public to adhere to all the necessary infection prevention measures as the country is still susceptible to the virus. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Central Statistical Office has adapted its operations in compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. The department has suspended all face-to-face -face interviews and adopted telephone interviews for the conduct of surveys. As such, the Central Statistical Office will be implementing the second quarter of the Labor Force Survey via telephone interviews. This will allow for the continued production and compilation of critical labor market information, which is necessary for further monitoring of the socio-economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The labor force survey questionnaire content remains unchanged and will maintain the use of the computer-assisted personal interviewing platform, which is carried out via a tablet. The interviewing time is expected to be approximately 20 minutes. The data collection for the second quarter labor force survey, that is April to June 2020, will commence on the 23rd of May 2020. The Central Statistical Office is therefore seeking the support and cooperation of the general public for the successful implementation of the new mode of the data collection for the labor force survey. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Ensure that farm clothing and gear is clean. Wash hands thoroughly before harvesting crops. Use face masks and head ties whilst harvesting, cleaning and packaging crops. Use all safety precautions when transporting crops to the markets and depots, such as handling crates and crops with only clean hands and covering sneezes and coughs with a tissue or the inner arm to ensure body fluids or droplets don't get on produce and washing hands or using hand sanitizer after using the tissue. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novel Aguayol. Merci, Hôtel Chanel. Merci, Madame, Department, Kinewes Consabilité.
Pour information, le gouvernement de la GIS, en somme et télévision nationale pays à NTN, car vous êtes nouvelle à Koyol. Vous êtes Primus Hutchinson. Mamsel Joyce August, un satellite qui développe une révolution en effort pour ressusciter la musique folklorique préparée. Joyce, qu'on nous tous en main cuillée, fait une contribution en développement de la musique folklorique à des degrés qui pièce l'autre pas sa comparer. Denise Joyce August, faite à Village La Bouille, mais suivre l'éducation à l'école secondaire privée. Saint-Joseph, et là, il développe et avance l'habilité à jouer au sport netball. Il fait autant succès à ce sport ça là, car vous présentez cette ici avec le pays Caïbe là et comme on là aussi. En ligne musique, il ressuscite la musique folklorique et travaille et puis assistance musicien comme Eric Adley, Eric Brunford, Charles Cadet, Bohingson et les autres. C'est lui qui a découvert le talent de fin de 1764. Et c'est lui qui a formé le groupe choral Honor Voices. Joyce conduit plusieurs projets de musique à cette ici. L'autre pays, à Caribla, et le Canada. Il fait études en musique à l'Angleterre et à l'Université West Indies. Joyce travaille au ministère de l'Éducation pour plusieurs années comme chef de l'éducation musique et aussi instruit musique à Collège des Étrènements de l'Institut et de Teacher l'école à Oumon. Il aussi travaillé pour Radio cette ci pendant qu'il était conduit avec continuer conduire divers projets musiques à pays. Joyce aussi fait plaisir l'honneur pour performance et développement sport, particulièrement netball. Il aussi fait MBA et OBI hors de la Wendy Languité et trouvé aussi l'honneur des médailles hors du gouvernement cette ci pour grande contribution en musique folklorique. Il trouvé honoré comme femme de sport à l'année 1969 à avril 2000. Il trouvait l'honneur qu'il n'y en a pas mis ses plus avancées formes pour ces années 1900 pour 2000. Joyce était coordinateur pour ses diverses activités de visitation les papes et aussi président de Sud-Afrique Nelson Mandela. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney déclare que la contribution de Joyce Auguste pour le développement de la musique folklorique a dégué qu'il a passé la musique. Le Premier ministre Chasney a ajouté que même moi, Joyce, qui vive et puis nous, pour l'année après l'année. Et c'est un plaisir pour savoir que Joyce trouvait l'honneur pour le pays pour contribution pour la musique export. Le ministre des Affaires et du Développement économique, on va Guy Joseph, n'a confiance que cette ci a bien parlé pour ouvrir le pays à Tigonde pour soulager l'économie. Selon le ministre Joseph, malgré cette ci a parlé, il n'est pas possible pour l'opération à commencer le 4 juin, comme qui est déjà annoncé, parce que ces pays internationaux là pour qu'on établit ces règles qui sont les six années en place avant que les citoyens soient entrés en pays. Le ministre du Développement économique là explique que ces règles qui sont les ni en place très haut pour assurer que les pays et les qui ont visité pour la protection de tout le monde contre la maladie de Corona. Sur so, le côté, les gens n'ont pas pour point en test. Um, 48 net de temps avant de venir. Même si nous n'avons pas eu de pour ici pour ça check ces gens dans les gens qui viennent Mais ce pays a même ça, ce avion a même ça, ce n'est pas pour pas eu pour voler. Donc nous avons dépendu à ce que nous avons eu de qui les gens qui ont eu de Nous avons eu 7 lycéens, 2 7 lycéens qui ont ces différents pays qui voulaient vivre. Mais yo poko sa vie, yo ke espe, laisse avion ka y commence voler encore. So tout se ba y sa nou ka me en place. Ministre Joseph dit ki sa gouvernement ka essaye fè, se pou vye etable travail en pays la. Ek travail la nou ka gade a se travail en ling de construction. So kote chimene pou bati, kote epoa, travail sen joud. Travaille à sous ces différents um, community centers, l'hôpital Denry, nous avons l'hôpital pour commencer à souffrir aussi. So, tout ce travail, ça, nous avons essayé de pousser devant. Nous avons nou des um, community centers pour bâtir en choisir, nous avons un Odsan, un Bexon, nous avons un Miku qui a commencé, nous avons un health center, un Miku qui a commencé. 
nous ni en cho à sous l'école mikoua qui ka commencé pour bâtir aussi so, tout ces travail ça nous ka garder c'est pour augmenter pour moun qui partenaire rien ka faire pour yo ça joindre yon des jours travail en ce bail ça pour commencer faire économie à l'aide excellent préparation pour travailler sur chemin la guerre et plateau à Paris Babono Jean août contract pour démonter chemin ça là tu trouver si mieux que les 20 mai pour ça là si le ministère des Affaires construction et travaux, c'est Yon en plusieurs qui n'est pour faire à bas programme et pouvement chez pays en phase 4 qui gouvernement de la République Chine en Taïwan qui a financé. Pour chez Chimé Babono, ça c'est la guerre avec plateau, c'est Yon côté la Kaini, oui bâtissement à peu près 3696 mètres de chemin sorti en Giap Pébouche pour Mon Citon sorti par la guerre. Un jument, canal aussi qui a fait avec l'autre chemin pour les résidents servis. Le projet a supposé fini en 8 mois si conditions de temps permettent et c'est OICC Mega Construction qui a bâti. Du bon travail qui a fait, la CAINI a une des petites contrariétés qu'on la poussière avec des ordres. Le département de construction a point apologie pour ça et a remercié les résidents de la guerre avec le plateau pour la patience et pour le point. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation pour que je puisse considérer. Conservez la vie. Côté, nous allons présenter une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présenté? Je vous remercie pour présenter une autre nouvelle. Merci, Appel Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. before we repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.